kids, welcome back. It's always so great to be together again. Well, today I'm just working really hard at my superhero training. Ha, huh, but enough about that. Today's Bible hero began serving a great prophet named Moses. He was also a secret spy who later on became a great leader and warrior. He was strong and courageous, but most of all, he was obedient to God. But once again, before we talk about our hero, let's get ourselves ready to go and worship God together. We gotta get up, turn around, jump around, everybody singing in the name of Jesus. We gotta get up, turn around, jump around and praise His name. Gotta get up, turn around, jump around, everybody singing in the name of Jesus. We gotta get up, turn around, jump around and praise His name. Let's clap our hands, let's dance around, let's stomp our feet and sing out loud. We gotta get up, turn around, jump around, everybody singing in the name of Jesus. We gotta get up, turn around, jump around and praise His name We gotta get up, turn around, jump around, everybody singing in the name of Jesus We gotta get up, turn around, jump around and praise His name Let's clap our hands, let's dance around Let's stomp our feet and sing out loud Jump around, everybody singing in the name of Jesus. We gotta get up, turn around, jump around and praise His name. We gotta get up, turn around, jump around, everybody singing in the name of Jesus. We gotta get up, turn around, jump around and praise His name. And praise His name. like it's shaking when my heart feels like it's breaking walking over waves can be hard to do take my hand you're the hero jesus you're the one who never leaves us whatever comes my way i'm holding on to you
that God's chosen people were the Israelites. God loved them very much and he wanted to give them a new land to live and build homes in. It was called the promised land. It was a very big and beautiful land that had lots of room for all their animals and they could grow amazing food. But there was one problem. This land was guarded by strong people who lived in cities that had huge walls around them. They did not want the Israelites there. If God's people were going to be able to live in this land, they were going to have to defeat these cities. And if that was going to happen, they would need a great leader, a leader who was strong and courageous, but most of all, who was obedient to God. So who could that leader be? Sounds like we need a hero. Our hero today is found in the book of Joshua, and his name is also Joshua. Hey, girl kids. My name is Joshua, and God gave me the privilege of leading the Israelites into the promised land that God had given us. Now, I've been called a great leader because I helped my people win many battles in order for us to take the land that God was giving to us. But honestly, it was God who deserves all of the glory because he was the one who did it. Now, my story really began years ago. As a young man, I served under another great leader named Moses. You may have heard of him. He was the guy whose mom put him in a basket on the river to save him from the Egyptians. You can read about that story in the book of Exodus. Now, Moses taught me everything I knew about being a great leader. One thing was that a good leader always learns to obey God, always. These are Moses' words found in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 33. And it says, Walk in obedience to everything the Lord your God has commanded you, so that you may live and prosper. And honestly, that's how Moses lived. He obeyed God and he helped him whenever he could with whatever he needed. And so I took that to heart. And from then on, my goal in life was to always obey God. Speaking about Moses, there was this time when Joshua was a young man that Moses asked him, his friend Caleb, and ten others to go and spy out the promised land. He wanted them to see how the people were and how the food was. So because they were obedient, they went and they did exactly as Moses asked. What they found was that the people and cities were big and strong, but also that the food was so very good. Whoa, those people look like giants. Wow, that's a big city. Wow, look at all this food. Hey, we should have some. When Joshua, Caleb, and the other spies returned to Moses, they talked about all the things that they saw, including big cities, and people that looked like giants. Oh man, 10 of the spies said they were too afraid to go into the promised land, but not Caleb and Joshua. They were not afraid because they trusted God. With God's help, they believed that they could overcome all their enemies. That's right. Only Caleb and myself believed that God would help us overcome the giants and the huge cities. But the other people, they would not obey God or even trust him. So God said that none of them could enter the promised land. Only their children, Caleb and myself, 
would be able to enter the promised land. But first, we would have to wait another 40 years until everyone who doubted had died. So Joshua and Caleb had no choice but to keep on following Moses and the people back into the desert for 40 years and wait to get back into the promised land. All this happened because the people of God did not trust or obey God. It's so hot. I'm so tired of walking. Oh, are we ever going to have something else to eat? What's for dinner tonight? Uh, I think it's manna again. Uh, are they ever going to stop complaining? Sorry, Moses. Finally, the 40 years were up. And Joshua and Caleb were ready to enter the promised land. But Moses was now an old man and would not enter the promised land. So God told Moses that Joshua would take over as leader after Moses had died. That is right. So before Moses died, he laid his hands on me and God's spirit filled me. And when his spirit filled me, he gave me wisdom to lead the people into the promised land. And so after Moses died, God then said to me that if I would trust him, keep his commands in my mind day and night, he would be with me. And that if I did my very best to always obey him, he would make me victorious in all of my battles. So right then and there, I decided again that I would obey God no matter what he told me to do, even if it sounded a bit crazy sometimes. Because guys, when I obey God, his commands, it pleases him. And his commands are always good for us, even our families. And when I obey God, he will bless me and he will bless you too with his help, with his faithfulness. This is who our God is. So finally, it was time for Joshua to lead the people into the promised land. In Joshua chapter 2, we read about Joshua's first challenge. It was to capture the city of Jericho. Now, some people said that no one could ever capture that city. We are told that there were walls up to 20 feet thick and 25 feet tall. Now, how would Joshua get over these high walls of the city? It would take a miracle that only God could do. But before we find out what happened, why don't we take a commercial break? Hi, Grow Kids. We're here on our commercial break. And like Michelin gave us a sneak peek, that's right, we're using marshmallows. And so I want to invite two of your amazing GROW teachers, Mary and Caitlin, to the table. Woo! Here they are! Hi! I'm so excited to see you guys. I'm so excited to be here today. Yeah, I want to say a special shout out to all my kids in my Sunday school class. You know who you are. Yeah, that's right. Mine too. So excited, so excited. <laughs> awesome, so we are happy to have you guys here with us. It's been a long time since we've been together. And, uh, and so what we're doing is we're talking about the story of Joshua today. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we're talking about in our story is the wall of Jericho. Okay. All right, and, and so Grow Kids at Home, you can do this too. If you've got some marshmallows and some toothpicks, you can okay. do this craft at home as well. Yes. Now what we're gonna have Caitlin and Mary do is in a couple of minutes, I'm going to count down from three and say go. And they're going to have three minutes to build their very own wall of Jericho out of marshmallows. All right? Ready? And so whoever can build the biggest, best wall that stands is going to be the winner today. All right? Make sense, guys? You got it. Are you ready? Yeah. You're sure? Okay, so <laughs> hands on the table so we know that there's not going to be anyone who's going to start too soon. All right. All right, I'm going to count down from three and say go, and then you can start building your marshmallow wall of Jericho. Ready? Mm -hmm. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> awesome. 
All right, off to, okay, we got, we got a little early lead there. We got four marshmallows in place, three here. A couple of different strategies going on. That's going on. That looks good. That's good. How are you feeling about your chances here I mean, today? I am pretty excited. Yeah. I am ready to mm -hmm. win this game. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, oh, a little struggle there. A little but, struggle, but, but, but you know yeah. what? I yeah. think we're good. Okay, I all mean, right. Josh most struggles too, right? He did, yeah, <laughs> he did, totally. Okay, all right, how are things going here? Pretty good. Okay, a, li a little, a little different. bit of space. Yeah, no, that's good. I see you're laying some of the marshmallows on the foundation down, mm -hmm. right? Are you yeah. kind of hoping that that's going to help it stand? Yeah, stand. yeah, that's what I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> that not working the best. All right, well, don't give up. Okay, what's happening back here? Oh, we're going for a double layer already. Yeah, I feel that's like, right. yeah. Well, like we said in our story, the wall was only 25 feet high. It was 20 feet thick. Yes. So that probably helped it stand oh. better, and that's kind of the approach that you're going for here. Guys, I am not doing so good here. <laughs> <Not either. laughs> no harder pressure. Than it looks. No pressure. It is harder. You guys have to try this too. Yes. That's right, girl kids. Make sure after we're done here, you can see if you have marshmallows and toothpicks at home. And we would challenge you to see if you can build even a better wall than your grow teachers are. <laughs> but they're not done yet. We've got a few more minutes to go. Maybe we'll even give them an extra minute. So it looks like they might need it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, no. I'll take an extra minute. <laughs> yeah, I'll take that minute, too. That's good. So you guys play with Lego at home when you, you were young girls, or is this some, something that... Yes. Okay, so we got a yes. Lego builder over there. Uh, I don't... doesn't look like I do Lego at home. <laughs> <laughs> Mine are just not doing good. That's okay. We That's got That's all them. right. Nope, it's never too late to learn new things. Nope. All right, so I see a bit of a disaster happening here, but uh, I'm going to go over here and see. All right, well, okay, wow, I like it. Oh, a different approach from the back here. Just to make it stand. That's right, you don't want these walls to fall. No. No, unless God would bring them down, of course, yes. then we just can't do anything about that, no, right? Exactly. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to give you one more minute. Oh, one no. more minute. <laughs> Pressure's on. Pressure's on. That's good. This is for the for all the money, right, guys? Yes. Indeed. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Looking good. Looking good. You're allowed to eat the marshmallows too. I probably should have said that ahead of time. <laughs> but eating your building material is <laughs> there you go. it's an important part of building. Mm -hmm. Exactly. See, now that I ate one, it's doing better. <laughs> All right, so we're down to 30 seconds. Now remember, your wall has to stay standing when you back away. We'll have a little countdown as far as done, and as soon as the countdown is over, you guys have to back away, and then we'll see which of these walls is truly meant to be the walls of Jericho. All right, all right, looking good. <laughs> Mine is wanting to fall. 10 seconds. Oh no! We've got nine, we've got eight, seven, Six, five seconds left. Four, three, make sure you finish up. Two, one, hands off. <laughs> Unless you're eating them, that's okay. <laughs> All right, well, let's slide this tray to the side. And if you want to slide your tray to the side. All right, kids, no! oh, what do you think? Let's wait for it. Wait for oh, it. No. Uh oh, uh oh, I think the wall, this wall, Jericho, is going it's and it's down. Our winner right here for the Wall of Jericho Building yeah, Contest. Thank you. Awesome. I hope you guys can do better because that was not great. <laughs> this was the secret. There, there it is. I love it. Story more yes. than that one. <laughs> well, thank you so much, guys, for, for joining awesome. us. I'm sure your, your kids and your class appreciated that. Mm -hmm. We're excited about being back together again one day. But for now, this is really great. And congratulations on your awesome, or not so awesome, <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. awesome. Oh, Jericho. <laughs> All right, and now back to our story. So welcome back, everyone. Can you believe it? The walls of Jericho were 25 feet tall. Do you guys know how tall 25 feet is? Well, hey, why don't we find out together? Is this 25 feet? No, this is not 25 feet. Is this 25 feet? No, that's not 25 feet. Uh, is this 25 feet? No, this is still not 25 feet. But I can show you what 25 feet is. Yes. Sherilyn, is this 25 feet? Yes. Guys, this is 25 feet. This is how tall the wall is. Wow, that is a tall wall. 
So even though the city had huge walls and soldiers, we believed God would be faithful to help us. And so I prepared all of my fighting men for battle. But, but then God asked me to do something very strange. He said if I would obey him, he would bring the walls of the city down by his own power, not mine. That is right. Instead of having Joshua and his army attack the city, God asked them to march around the wall of the city and hold their trumpets, but not attack. In fact, God asked them to do the very same thing for six days. Defeating Jericho was going to be about faith in God and not Joshua's strength. Well, all of this sounds easy. It was not. Here we were, a strong army, ready for battle, and all we could do was march around with our trumpets? What would my men think of my battle plan, marching instead of fighting? But even though it did not make sense to me or my men, we chose to obey God. And so we marched around the city for six days with our trumpets, just as God had said. But then, on the seventh day, God asked us to do something different. That's right! On the seventh day, God told Joshua to march around the city seven times. Oh, wow! That is a lot of marching. They must have had tired feet. <sighs> Even though Joshua and his men did not understand what, what they were doing by being obedient to God this way, on the seventh time around, God said to Joshua to blow the trumpet and shout. So that is what we did. On the seventh time around, we blew our trumpet and we shouted out loud. And do you know what happened? The walls that no one said we could get through, God completely collapsed them right down to the ground. Wow, it was amazing. Because of God's strength, our army was now able to walk in and capture the city. Even though it did not make any sense at the time, I am so glad that we obeyed God and did exactly what he asked us to do. And in the end, God was the real hero of this story. All we had to do was have faith and obey his word. And that is what Joshua did. He always tried to obey God, even if it did not make sense. So, grow kids, why do you think that God asked Joshua to march instead of fight? Well, I want to give you two reasons. The first reason was to teach Joshua to obey God, no matter how strange it may have seemed at the time. He had to learn to be obedient. And the second reason was to grow Joshua and the people's faith in God. They would need lots of faith in God if they were going to overcome all the other challenges in the promised land. Well, today we talked a lot about being obedient to God. And the reason Joshua had so much success in his role as a leader is because he obeyed God. Now, just like Joshua, we too are called to obey God. And so how do we do that? Well, again, like Joshua, we can choose to obey God's commands that we find in the Bible. And so what are those commands? Well, one of them that we can practice is choosing to obey the good things our parents ask us to do. And when they ask us to do things like clean up around the house or do the dishes, those are good things that we can do to help them and obey God. Another way is to be kind to others in the way we talk to them. We can also share instead of keeping things to ourselves. And those are just a few of the ways that we can obey God. So sometimes I have a hard time being obedient to God, and I wonder if the kids do too. What are some ways that we could grow in our obedience to God? Good question. You know what? We all need to grow in obeying God even more, right? So I find that 
when the more I spend time with God during the day, like by praying, talking to him, hearing mm -hmm. him talk to me and reading his word, then the more I love God and the more I love God, the more I want to obey him. Mm -hmm. um, and you know what? My obedience helps me grow my faith, my trust in God too, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, so guys at home, kids, I want to encourage you to spend lots of time with God every day to be heroes of obeying God. Wow, that is awesome. Not only does our faith and trust grow in him, our Bible verse also reminds us that when we are obedient to God, it pleases him. When our lives please him, he rewards us with his help, just like he did for Joshua. Now, grow kids, let's say this verse together again with actions this time. And let's invite our hero to help us. Hey there. Oh, thanks for coming. Yes, it's great to be here. I'm so excited. Do you want to show us some hero actions that we can do for our verse? Oh, I would love to do that. Oh, yeah. Okay, hey, well, kids, why don't you get up off the couch and do these hero actions with us? Yeah. And so, again, our Bible verse is Deuteronomy 5.33. Okay, are we all ready? Yeah. So it starts with walking. Okay, all right, walking. so let's get our walking on. So it says, walk in obedience to all the Lord your God okay. has commanded you so that we may live and prosper. Now, before we go, let's take a moment to pray and ask God to help us be obedient to him by obeying the Bible and even the good things that our parents ask us to do. Let's bow together. Dear God, thank you today for the amazing story of Joshua. We thank you that Joshua chose to be obedient to you and you were with him because of that. And so today, God, we ask that you would help us also be obedient to you. Help us to obey the commands you give us in the Bible, and also help us to obey the good things that our parents ask us to do. In your name we pray, amen. Stories of the Bible, Joshua Leads. This is Joshua. Hello. Joshua was an Israelite who followed Moses through the wilderness. One, two, three, here we go. Oh, hey Joshua learned from Moses as Moses led the Israelites through the Red Sea. And as Moses taught the people about God's law. Oh, here. Oh, I see. Oh, listen up. One day, Moses was talking to the Israelites. He was reminding them of the law and all that God had done for them. Yeah, I'll see here, all you. When Moses had finished giving instructions to the people, he said, I am no longer able to lead you. Hold on. Do not be afraid, for God will neither fail you nor abandon you. Yeah. Then Moses called Joshua Me? and told him to be strong and courageous, for he would lead the Israelites into the promised land. Well, see? <laughs> then Moses died. <laughs> to this day, no one knows exactly where he was buried. The people and all of Israel mourn. The people of Israel looked to Joshua to lead them, as Moses had told them. There he is. Yeah. God told Joshua to be strong and courageous, for he would be with Joshua wherever he went. He told him to remember what Moses had told him and to study the book of instruction. God told Joshua that it was time to lead the people of Israel across the Jordan River and into the Promised Land. Okay, here we are. Joshua told the Israelite officials to go throughout the camp. Get out there. They instructed everyone to pack up and get ready to head out. Ah. Joshua told the Israelites they were going to cross the Jordan River. See here, this is what we're gonna do, okay? <gasps> and so. Joshua prepared to lead his people as the Lord had commanded. <laughs>